Good afternoon, Doc Gina and classmates. I, John Nakrisita Payan, and Ms. Christy Marie Pagalan will discuss about the Eastern approaches of psychological counseling and psychotherapy. Eastern and Western counseling and psychotherapy approaches have similarities in that they both focus on relieving human suffering and helping people feel better. Western approaches place more focus on psychopathology and rely on a medical model of alleviating symptoms, while Eastern approaches can also be applied to psychopathology and the alleviation of symptoms, their primary focus tends to be on flourishing and achieving optimal human development through leading an ethical life. So Western approaches place more emphasis on correction and on mitigating feelings and, sy and symptoms, while Eastern approaches, on the other hand, are more aimed at liberation and setting people truly free so they can be in charge of their feeling states and so that they can control their thoughts. Western approaches control tends to be externally located with the expectation being that the right technique or intervention will fix the client, while the Eastern approaches integration of body, mind, and energy, and it is assumed that people will fix themselves often by paying close attention to themselves and their surroundings. Western approaches healing power required external help by psychotherapy and medication, while Eastern approaches the power to heal come from, comes from within. The therapeutic goals of counseling and therapy established under Eastern philosophies and practices include restoring the dynamic balance of the body, mind, and spiritual integrity well-being, fostering strengths, and facilitating meaning-making for individuals and families. So, what is yoga? Yoga can be traced back to ancient India where the earliest mentions of it have been found in the oldest known existing text, the Rig Veda. It is composed approximately 1700 to 1100 BCE and held in a text called Yoga Sutras or Patanjali which contain 196 sutras or rules or formulas. So the word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yuj meaning to join or to yoke or to unite. And it is a physical, mental, and spiritual philosophy and practice with an ultimate goal of attaining a state of permanent peace within self. It also focuses on bringing harmony between mind and body, and yoga includes simple meditation, breath control, and adoption of certain bodily postures. Researchers found that yoga can improve health, quality of sleep, and has greater self-awareness both internally and physically and an, and an overall improved quality of life. So there are four forms of yoga. The mantra yoga, laya yoga, hara yoga, and raha yoga. The mantra yoga is for concentration and peace, and it is derived from the word mantra, which is a sacred word chant, sound, syllable, or word, believed to have spiritual and psychological power. So mantra is typically melodic and can be internal and silent or external and verbal. It is important in developing concentration during meditation, and chanting of mantras in, med in meditation is practiced in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. Next is Laya Yoga or Kundalini Yoga. It is the yoga of awareness, and its focus is to activate and awaken Kundalini energy. So what is Kundalini energy? It is a feminine power that can be awakened to attain a state of peace and enlightenment. And it is linked in the West to Freud's libido or energy theory and the unconscious. And it is awakened through meditation, chanting matras, pranayama breathing, and asana or postures. Next is hatha yoga for balance. It is performed with a high degree of concentration, non-competitively and slowly, what the West typically knows as yoga, and it is focused on physical and mental strength building and exercises and postures described primarily in three texts of Hinduism. And Hara Yoga strengthens the body and encourages balance. And it also used with various practices such as mantra or repetition of sound and yantra observation of verbal images. Next is Raha Yoga or the discovery of our own mind. It is a meditation and contemplation with a goal to find reality and achieve awakening. And it was first described in the Eightfold Path. 
Patanjali's Eightfold Path are Yamas, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratihara, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. Yama is how you relate to the external world through ethical behavior like nonviolence, truth, or not stealing. Niyama is how you relate to your internal selves. And the, it is the cleanliness of mind and body, satisfaction, and contentment, or spiritual openness. Asana is a posture that are practiced in yoga, and it, it is developed ability to concentrate and focus energy in words. Pranayama is the control of breathing, and it is the recognition of breath in relation to internal states, emotional, and physical. And it supports that pranayama techniques aid in treatment of stress disorders. Pratihara is the withdrawal, or sensory transcendence, and the attention it is away from external stimuli and detached from the senses we can look at inwards. And Pratihara also allows us to step back and observe our own pattern that stunt our personal growth. And it prevents us from engaging in thought patterns that are irrational or emotional damaging. The Rana, on the other hand, is the concentration on a single object. It is avoidance of all other thoughts, although awareness of the object still exists. Dhyana, or meditation, is being aware but without focused and stillness of the mind, and the busyness is gone. And samadhi, lastly samadhi, is the self-knowledge in its highest form, and it is the eighth and final limb, and it is described as a state of consciousness where internal and external world emerge. There are many related studies for yoga, and there is evidence for the efficacy of yoga for anxiety disorders and post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. And there is also evidence that yoga interventions may be helpful for depression. Next is Buddhist approach to psychotherapy. Buddhist teachings and practices have been around for an estimated 2,500 years, and it is brought forward by its creator, Gautama Buddha. So, the therapeutic goal of this Buddhist approach to psychotherapy is honoring man's innate potential to achieve complete freedom from suffering and sustainable happiness. So, there are four noble truths according to Gautama Buddha. First is life has inevitable suffering. Second, there is a cause to our suffering. Third, there is an end to suffering. And fourth, the end to suffering is contained in the Eightfold Path. So Buddhism provides a, pa a practical path of living to escape from the suffering by means of liberation from attachment, known as the Eightfold Way. So this Eightfold Way will be discussed. These are the Noble Eightfold Ways. First is the right speech or saying nothing that hurt others. Second, right livelihood or respecting life. Third, right concentration or practice meditation. Fourth, right mindfulness or controlling your thoughts. Fifth, right effort or resisting evil. Sixth, right action or work for the good of others. Seven, right intention or free your mind of evil. And eight, right understanding or view or knowing the truth. Mindfulness meditation's goal is not to change nor challenge the content of cognitive thoughts present within one's mind, but yet to encourage upon a different attitude or relationship to thoughts, feelings, and sensations. So Buddhist teachings praise this state as the enlightened awareness of the true being. There are researches about Buddhism teachings that have shown to significantly impact within various clinical issues such as addiction, borderline personality disorder, eating disorders, depression and depressive relapse, panic attacks and anxiety disorder, and chronic pain and suffering. Now let's proceed to Zen therapy. So it is a traditional Buddhism originated in North India and moved farther east and came in contact with China and now can be formed in Korea, Thailand, and Japan. So what is Zen therapy? It is a type of therapy that encourages self-understanding through prolonged meditation and it is roughly translates to meditative state and it involves focusing on the breath and remaining in the present moment. It centers on a personal relationship with your own mind and a higher and defined entity outside of yourself and being Zen means essentially a state of being at peace with your own thoughts 
and being self-aware of your place within the universe. Now, how to begin Zen meditation? First is getting in the right position and create a relaxing place to sit. So, you need to find a place where there is no distraction. Second, get into a stable position like the picture provided. Third, position your head in a comfortable fashion. Fourth, relax your jaw and facial muscles without tension. Now, let's go to practicing the basics. First, breathe through your nose. Second, focus on the breath. Third, decide what to do with your eyes. Either you want to close your eyes or you want to focus on one object. Fourth, redirect your mind when it wanders. Fifth, start off with two minutes of meditation. Then five minutes, ten minutes, twenty-five minutes, and so on. And third is easing into a routine. First, invest in a Zafo or small pillow. You can purchase it online. Second, do not worry about perfection right away. Third, increase your sessions with time. And fourth, take classes. There are many related studies on the Zen therapy, which suggest that Zen therapy alleviates stress and potentially improves the overall health-related quality of life. Now let's proceed to Chinese civilization, specifically the Taoism. Taoism is founded by Lao Tzu, a legendary philosopher of ancient China, and Lao Tzu is honored as a deity in religious Taoism. Taoism is translated as the path or way, and it emphasizes acceptance of unity and opposites, or yin and yang. It is the achievement of harmony with nature, self-development, and selves viewed as one with nature, seekers of balance, and an ongoing work in progress. So Taoist psychotherapy, the fun fundamental changes in attitudes, life will take its own course, and one will eventually experience peace and fulfillment. And Taoism is the concept of synchronicity and harmony. Chinese Taoist Cognitive Psychotherapy or CTCP, so it combines elements of cognitive therapy and Taoist philosophy for contemporary Chinese clients, and it was developed by Dersen Yang and Yalan Zhang. And CTCP involves a total of 15 one-hour sessions administered over six months. So the CTCP model of intervention contains five sequential stages, stage A to stage E, which are co sequentially conducted at five or more sessions of one hour each, depending on the client's need to repeat stages D and E. For the stage A of CTCP, the clinician assists clients in identifying and analyzing actual stressors of the client based mostly on subjective experiences. For the stage B, the clients are instructed to share their self-prioritized needs according to their own personal opinion. For the stage C, the relative effectiveness of the client's coping strategies is evaluated by the therapist based on the client's indicated degree of use in the event of psychological conflict. The therapeutic core of CTCP in Stage D explains the complementary roles of Taoism and Confucianism to the Stage D. So, Stage D, as described by Zhang et al., the 32-character formula in Stage D is composed of four eight-character sentences, that outline the central tenets of Taoism. So, A, the first eight characters, which means benefiting without hurting others and acting without striving. And the second group of eight characters, which means restricting selfish desires, learning to be content, and knowing how to let go. And the third set of eight characters, which means being in harmony with others and being humble, using softness to defeat hardness. And the fourth and last set of eight form of the sentence, which means maintaining tranquility, act less, and follow the laws of the nature. So clients are helped to achieve a deep understanding of these philosophical tenets by studying and to apply such principles as acceptance, detachment, tranquility, and conformity with the laws of nature as means of coping with psychosocial conflicts. So for the stage E and the final stage of CTCP, it is a comprehensive assessment of effectiveness 
and is performed through the client self-report and discussion of therapeutic experience and client rating scales. There are many related studies about CTCP or Chinese Taoist Cognitive Therapy that suggest that CTCP can help reduce depressive symptoms and it has significant improvements in psychological inflexibility, anxiety, worry, and emotional avoidance. And it is also helpful in coping with anxiety. These are my references. Now, Ms. Christy Pagalan will discuss more about Eastern approaches to psychotherapy.